What we're trying to do as Status Pro is really capture that first person sports experience and really give the player what it feels like to be an NFL athlete. So something that's unique about Status Pro in general is a lot of our full-time employees or just employees in general are former athletes, right? So we really have that experience and perspective on what it feels like to be a high level athlete, right? At the highest levels of the game. And what we're really trying to do is introduce that in several, several different layers of the game, right? Not just in pure gameplay, but in the depth and emotion of the feeling, right? It's about capturing the feeling of being an athlete. But Unity Enterprise was great for us this year because as a sports title, we've been delivering annual cadences. We rely a lot on contractors to help us with some of our work. A lot of people in the games industry, that's you know pretty much par for the course standard. Um, me being in charge of you know the tool set, what we use, how we go about it, there's a level of um, comfort that comes with having that level of support and guarantee around what you're doing, not just when you're upgrading the engine, right? But also making sure that the contractors and even your internal people, right, are doing best practice. Anything that I deem or the team, you know, my technical team deems as um, potential risk, we want to de-risk that as much as possible, right? So um, that investment was well worth it for us and has been. We launched on Steam, PlayStation, and MetaQuest. Anybody who launches on some of these platforms knows the challenges involved with doing that. And I would say for us releasing our first title, having the ambition to do it across three different platforms um, was a challenge for us, right? There, there were, with one specific platform, there were challenges that we frankly needed to just kind of hand it off to Unity to help us solve. And uh, having that available, you know, to meet our timelines and deadlines was critical. We use them to validate our approach to the project, what we're doing, what we're thinking about. Um, more specifically, when we we're looking at revamping our multiplayer, ECS and DOTS was one of the things that we were looking into, right? Um, we also use it for our new contractors coming in to understand best practices, right? Because again, making a VR game is one thing and having that experience, but making a football game in VR is a totally different thing, right? When it comes to simulation, the engine, and generally speaking, um, some of the outsourced talent that we use has decent Unity experience, but doesn't necessarily have the depth in what we're always looking for. So having that ISS support to kind of hand them off to and uh, help really you know, take away some of the learning curve has been helpful for us as well. If you can afford to use Unity Enterprise in a space where you've got unknown talent, and you want to make sure things are being done properly, right? Where you're flowing contractors in and out, working on pieces here, pieces there. I think this is where, where ISS and Unity Enterprise becomes a value add to an organization. We're always exploring how to get better as an organization, as an engineering team, really as a company, right? Um, we look to our partners in specific areas to help us achieve that. With Unity's help, with Enterprise ISS, one of the areas we're looking at was changing around our multiplayer system, right? ECS and DOTS. Like, what does that look like? in the future for Status Pro? What do we have to change? Um, what does that mean in terms of time, project timeline, right? So what was really helpful in that process is our customer success manager. She basically went and found the specific people we needed to talk to on the Unity side. And what was really helpful in those conversations, and this is my thing, I really don't wanna hear just about Unity's products, right? The engineer, because they have all of this expertise over their years with multiplayer engines and different architectures and frameworks, they actually spent the time dissecting what we already had in place, looking at what Unity offered, but then also offering alternatives, right? So it became a, a process of us really triaging and learning where we were. Unity, the Unity engineers and the ISS team understanding where we wanted to go as an organization long term, right? Because that's really what it comes about when you're talking about a multiplayer game that scales over over time with millions and millions of users. And making a, a set of recommendations, not just for the right now, but hey, if, if you really want to do this, this is probably the path you need to look to take, right? And um, it helped, again, we're thinking one thing, but it's, you know, when, you've, when you've got a thought in your mind on, on the direction you want to go, 
having a third party or an outside resource either validate or you know, throw those thoughts out and say, have you thought about it this way, right? Given your experience, lack of, or here's my experience with this and here's where it didn't work well, here's where it did work well. That became key for us, right, early on, because what it helped us do ultimately was make quick decisions with confidence. And that's really what it comes down to. We wanted to make sure that we had access to all possibilities when it comes to beefing up our simulation, right? So one of the issues that we tend to run into with, again, just um, football in VR is how large the simulation can be and how complex we want to make things happen, right? But in reality, the headset still has the power of a mobile phone, right? We don't have the ability to do things like a console does, right? So the experience has to be performant and it has to be uh, AAA quality, right? We ran into a few issues where we needed to see what was happening in the engine directly so we could work around that, right? So I think that's a prime example of um, areas in which Having source code, like being able to read the source code to understand really what's going on without having to wait on a response from a Unity engineer helps us move forward at speed, right? Because that's one of the things we want to make sure we're doing is high performance, high speed when it comes to our development lifecycle. So for us, what becomes important understanding really our relationship with the league and timing of when we want to do things, having that LTS support, frankly, is big for us. Right? It allows us to focus on what we want to do around the product instead of always trying to figure out bugs or upgrades in the engine year to year or whenever it comes out of support. And um, me personally, I like to be on not necessarily the latest and the greatest all the time, but I want to be on a stable release, i.e. LTS, um, that we know we can build upon moving forward. Right? I think that becomes important for us and then we'll solve those other problems you know, in an async manner off cycle, right? Because our product is really seasonal, right? The NFL season starts in September, really preseason is when people look forward to football coming back again, and it's over again in February, right? So when you, when you think about our product in general or sports products in general, the life cycle, the timeline that you have is a very short window to make gains, right? Some games are in development for years before they get released and they've got, and they still come out with tons and tons and tons of bugs. But for us to be successful three years in a row releasing our product, again, that's where Unity comes in. That's where ISS, Enterprise Success comes in. Every developer has their way of doing things. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way for your product or for what you're trying to achieve. So the context of where you're trying to go from a technical perspective, from an architecture design perspective, again, not just for this iteration of the game, but over two to three iterations of the game is really what matters. And if you're not thinking in that way, all you're doing is compounding technical debt and having to get back to originally what should have been your design from a technical perspective.